Microsoft has taken a little bit of a low-key approach in promoting the new Gears of War, but I'm gonna be honest, I'm pretty excited. They didn't really have to do anything. To scratch that itch, today Game Ranks brings you 10 Gears of War facts. Number 10, the voice cast is actually pretty darn, well, famous as far as voice actors go. It's hard to call voice actors famous sometimes, but these are voices you know. Marcus Phoenix, for instance, is played by John DiMaggio, who doesn't just play Bender on Futurama. He also plays Jake the Dog on Adventure Time. In fact, that guy's got a long rap sheet. He was in Final Fantasy X. He was Waka, which is funny. Dom from Gears of War, for instance, is Leonardo da Vinci in Assassin's Creed. And also Coltrane is played by Terry Tate. I mean, his name's not really Terry Tate, but if you remember those office linebacker commercials from a couple Super Bowls ago, well, that's Coltrane. Number nine, Gears of War 3 was written by an author that has not played Gears of War. <laughs> To be completely honest, the story of that game is one of the better ones. She literally didn't play it. And not just because she isn't a gamer or anything, it's literally that she prefers to go into her stories cold. Meaning she doesn't know any backstory at all before getting to work. She got all of the backstory by just looking at the art. She's also written several of the Gears of War novels, so it's hard to say that she doesn't like the universe. I'm guessing that she really likes the universe. I mean, it's bizarre. Like, seriously, it's probably the best out of the trilogy's stories. Like, the story is really, really good. Like, the commercials for Gears of War were always super emotional, but they finally managed to nail it in Gears of War 3, which was written by somebody who didn't play the original games. It's amazing. Now, I know purists probably won't like to learn this type of a fact, but to be completely honest, this excites me. Like, bring more narrative people in. If they haven't played the game, who cares? Gears of War 3 is a great story. Number 8, there's kind of a duck hunt game hidden in Gears of War 3. If you shoot three coins in a certain order that are hidden on the sides of trees in the level House of Sand. Now this is an interesting one on account it was found this year. The video detailing how to do it was actually only posted last month. It's pretty interesting because you actually get several rewards based on how well you do, and it kind of plays out like a weird arcade shooting gallery. Number seven, Boomers, one of the enemies in the game, are named after the humanoid robots in the anime Bubblegum Crisis, which despite its silly name is incredibly dark and dystopian. It draws a lot of influence from Blade Runner, which sort of pays homage to both the synthetic replicant humans in Blade Runner, as well as the Terminator robots in, you know, Terminator. Gears of War's boomers are very obviously not robots, but it's an interesting bit of history and provides a little bit of insight where the people who came up with all of these things are coming from. Number six, before Cliff Plezensky pitched Microsoft the idea for Gears of War, he was in his hotel room and listened to Eminem's Lose Yourself on repeat while he did a bunch of push-ups. Whether or not you think this is cool, interesting, or kinda douchey, obviously depends on your own perspective in life, but I'm of the opinion that whatever it is you want to do, if it works, do it. And in this case, it worked out. Another quick Clippy B fact, in the first issue of Nintendo Power, Cliff Blazinski was at the top of a list of high scores for Super Mario Brothers on page 99. And in his Twitter avatar, he's got a Mr. Booby Butthole sticker on his phone. Number five, the Game of Thrones score composer, you know, the person who made the dun 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 song, is composing the soundtrack to the new Gears of War. And just to be like super duper clear about that, that's awesome. The music in the Game of Thrones show is perhaps some of the best music in television and film, period. And if you ask me, one of the primary things that makes the Game of Thrones series so popular without anybody really knowing it is the music. Because, I'm going to be honest, a lot of the time they fuck the story up pretty bad. But that music! Number four, the original Gears of War cost $12 million to make and made $100 million in revenue. So it was pretty profitable. And the second one, though, however, ballooned about five times that much. And by the, the fourth title, the one that we're getting now, it would have cost Epic Games about $100 million to make. So it would have had to been astoundingly successful for them to actually come out ahead. Which is essentially why they sold the property off to Microsoft. Now, Microsoft can make it a centerpiece, 
They brought in a lot of the developers that have worked on Gears of War titles and can spend time showing why you need an Xbox One because of this game. Whereas Epic, I mean, if they were going to make a Gears of War 4, it probably would have been multi-platform because that development cost is extremely high. And no joke, could have broken the company. Number three, Epic had actually done some work on Gears of War 4, both with and without Rod Ferguson, who is the head of the Coalition now. And some of that work was incorporated into what we now know as Gears of War 4, although a bit modified. He had worked on it a little bit before he'd left Epic Games and wasn't entirely happy with what had gone on with the franchise after he had left. So some of the content made it in in name only, some of the content made it in in a more tangible fashion, and some of it was just done away with entirely. But things like the fact that our character is Marcus Phoenix's son came from all that pre-production work. Same with the name of the monsters, although the monsters themselves look very different from the Epic Games version, apparently. Obviously, we don't have photos of the Epic Games version. But Rod Ferguson did not want to abandon all of that work. And knowing that should bridge the gap between Gears of War 3 and 4 uh, maybe a little bit better. It's not entirely new. It's not an entirely new team. There's some faces and some elements that were there long before Microsoft even thought of buying it. And it's probably going to be all the better for it. Number two, the Lancer, you know, the gun with the chainsaw, almost wasn't in Gears of War. There was apparently a large amount of internal debate leading up to the release of the game where some people thought the weapon was just too gruesome, while others people thought it was absolutely the thing that set the game apart from pretty much every other game aside from the cover base mechanics. It was the visual thing that said, this is Gears of War. And can you imagine this game without that gun? Or with a version of it that didn't have the chainsaw? because that was also on the table. In fact, there were quite a few different versions of the gun that were considered even. One with a buzzsaw instead of a chainsaw, which kind of would have looked like a pizza cutter a little. Obviously, the version that made it into the game became iconic, so they made the right choice, but it's sometimes shocking to hear about the things that they almost didn't do. And finally, number one, Gears of War started off as a project called Unreal Warfare, which was a class-based multiplayer shooter, which if you think about it is a little bit ahead of its time. As they saw more and more games with campaigns sort of establishing a brand, which they sort of pulled it away a little bit from Unreal more and more until Gears of War was formed, a completely new IP. All of the concepts that made Gears of War into what it is today took a long time to come out, including the fact that they were absolutely adamant that there were no laser guns in the game. You know, lasers being quite the sci-fi staple, and Gears of War being sci-fi. All that time and focus, and the want to make an actual good campaign, really created a unique game with very refined cover mechanics and weapons that you remember no matter what. Are you guys excited for Gears of War? for? Did it make you remember some stuff about the other Gears of War games that you particularly liked? Let's just go crazy with Gears of War discussion in the comments today. And if you enjoyed this video, please click like. If you're not subscribed, now is a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every single day of the week. And as always, we thank you very much for watching this one. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at Falcon the Hero. And we'll see you next time right here on Game Rings.